Today we have five questions for interior designer Alan Tanksley. I am Peter in New York City. And I'm Ariana in Seattle, and you are watching Shelter. Uh, Alan, thank you for joining us. It's really a pleasure to be able to have you on Shelter. So your first question is, what is the best way to use bold colors? I've thought about this quite a lot. Um, I guess I think about it all the time. I came up with three thoughts on this. The best way that I started A would be to introduce bold colors at the entrance to wherever you're setting up. This could be residential, it might be your office and workspace, but let's say you have a vestibule, a corridor, um, an entrance hall, and you want to set the mood. And you know, we live and have lived primarily in an all beige world. So pretty much anything one does upon entering is gonna have an impact. If you set that up first, then you know that it's going to be something unusual. Just there's an anticipation. Something maybe that's a little bit more understandable and not so bold might be to choose a smaller space, a bathroom, a powder room, um, a study. You know, something where maybe you want to try it out and, and go bold. You know, and bold doesn't again necessarily mean super saturated colors, but you know the use of color itself. And then go bigger. Go into your dining room, living room, family room and try color there. You know, something deep is going to set a mood about the classic deep library, you know, or something really vivid like that um, orange. And you're going to see in one of my pictures where I use a sort of Hermes orange in the dining room. And there isn't anyone in that room that doesn't look good, A, eh, and also has something to say about it. How do you use color on a ceiling? I love using color on the ceiling. I mean, a classic New England thing on the you know, outdoor spaces, covered areas and so on is that watery blue. In addition to that, I love using color on ceilings. I like using wallpaper on ceilings, patterns on ceilings, and it can have very different effects. One of them being a darker color. It can raise the eye so that you know, a white ceiling often comes down. And everybody says, well, I'm going to feel like I'm cramped. When in fact, it's almost like infinity. You know, you think about the dark evening sky. There's nothing between you and out there. I also like the use of metallic gold, silver, copper, bronze leaf. It can be a metallic paint. And then also wall coverings, wallpapers are beautiful. So, Alan, how do you pick the perfect color for a project? I will tell you this, Peter. I don't have a ready answer for that. It's a process. Those in the audience, a low audience, might want to know is how one can choose a perfect color. First thing to consider is what is the relationship to color that you have? You know, what's your comfort level? And maybe you're going to exceed and go beyond it a bit more. You might, Maybe you want to stay within the safety of that. You don't have experience and you're not sure what to do. We have at our fingertips right now are the internet, just filled with, with images. Of course, the shelter magazines have always had that. Um, and depending on which magazine you have, some of them emphasize editorially more color. Some of them are, are going to be more neutral. But then the thing that I really emphasize, and this is old school, is keep your eyes open. Walk around. See what, what feels. You know, there's nothing like standing in a room or in a space and absorbing how it makes you feel should I use in a very small room? Smaller spaces are going to have a, let's call them a more dense experience. And I would say that, you know, you want to consider what do you want to achieve in that space? Same principles of what I was saying earlier, smaller spaces, the entrance hall, the vestibule, the study, and so on. You know, you really can set the tone. You can, you can be but I do, I want to encourage you to use rich colors. I want you to, you know, choose what, what, and also in a small room, take a look in the mirror. What, what makes you look good? What makes you happy? What's, what are you looking to achieve? No, I'll leave it at that. What is the best color to get you in the mood? I love that question. And my answer is really simple on that one. <clears throat> Honestly, it's not about color. It's about lighting. You can have a bright white room, and if you don't have a dimmer, she ain't going to be sexy. Take a deep color room, same thing. Um, if your mood is that you want to get some tasks done, turn up the light. But if you're talking about the mood, dim the lights. The lower the lights, the younger I look. <laughs> oh, okay. Okay, so the bonus question is, what is your favorite color on the wall? I've just fallen in love recently with this uh, a picture that I saw. Uh, I don't even know where it came from, but it's a upholstered wall. It has a really rich decoration, so I'd say that it's more traditional, more clubby, more English. There's a most beautiful olive green velvet on the walls, so 
right now, as I sit here right now, that's my favorite color. Well, Alan, thank you so much for taking the time to talk with us today and sharing some of your expertise. It really has been a pleasure to chat and learn from you. Thank you so much for um, Peter and for Ariana to um, ask me to do this. I think the program is terrific. I'm looking forward to future episodes. And I'll end by saying this. My former business partner, Paula Perlini, said to me and would talk to clients and one of the first things she would say is, don't be a color coward. So I pass that on to you or to your audience. Um, go for it. It's color. You can always repaint. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Alan. Wasn't that amazing, Peter? Oh my God, that was great. I love Alan. Me too, such amazing advice. So all of you guys need to stay tuned because we have many more exciting collaborations with interior designers coming up in the weeks ahead. This has been Ariane in Seattle. And I'm Peter in New York City, and you have been watching Shelter.